Hello, and welcome to my channel. I'm Crusader, your humble goat of a host, and this is my submission for the Agmashwa Cursed Conlang Circus, Flatula, a language of farts. I got inspired to make a submission to this year's circus while re-watching Disney's Treasure Planet, for the same reasons you do. In it, there's a scene where Snuff, the one and only of his kind we see in the whole movie, is heard speaking in Flatula. And Dr. Doppler, despite having none of the trunks of flatulence, is able to converse in it fluently. So, I chose to make this language a reality. Let's take a look at their biology. It's significantly different from that of humans, having a set of five trunks coming out of their face and ten on their back, all of which are utilized for speech. For humans to speak flatula, they're required to make sounds not common among human languages, if present at all. The seven articulations include made from trilling your lips like you're imitating a horse, made by forcing air out through a small hole at the front of your mouth, blowing a raspberry, blowing air over the top of your tongue, blowing a raspberry from under your tongue, this one sprays spit everywhere, sucking in air from the corner of your mouth, a whoopee cushion, and an armpit fart five of which can vary by tone and length, and three of which can have a rising or falling tone. The remaining two don't vary by length or pitch. P, B, and D were initially chosen because they all look like a stuck out tongue, but if I were to do this again, I'd probably switch D and Q for F and T to make it look more like fart onomatopoeia, but here we are. When speaking to flatulins, it's important that you address them with the appropriate honorific to avoid offending them. Luckily, the chart isn't too complicated and all the honorifics are audibly distinct. Oh. Oh boy. Well, luckily, you can just think of the appropriate honorifics as just the end of their name. It's not like you have to put a different suffix at the end of every pronoun or adjective that refers to them. Oh, well. Looks like we've stumbled into the main joke of this conlang. They speak in farts, but you're the impolite one. Do you get anxiety around speaking to natives of a language you're learning? Well, this conlang should feel extra cursed for you. Very often, by making minor errors in pronunciation, let alone grammar, you'll end up saying something very rude. It doesn't help that their speakers are aliens, so you can't rely on the universality of human body language and facial expressions. This sounds similar to the premise of hyperformal, one of Gna's cursed conlangs. But importantly, when you make a mistake in Flatula, you don't get killed in Mortal Kombat. You just wish you were. Speaking of mistakes, the grammar requires you to keep in mind an animacy hierarchy and list all of the nouns at the start of the sentence accordingly. The hierarchy, from most to least, goes flatulence, animals, including humans, forces of nature, including times of day, Ideas, including actions and events like sleeping or laziness. Artificial objects, non-animal organisms, mainly plants, and inanimate nature, including locations. I, a drink for you can buy, implies that the cute flatulent you're chatting up is worth less to you than the drink itself. The correct order should be, for you, I, a drink can buy, since humans always go after flatulence. Uh, I, I mean, since humans are always placed after flatulence in a sense, you know what I mean. As you could probably guess, the nouns are inflected for the nominative, accusative, and dative since the word order doesn't denote those things. Although, they aren't used if the most animate noun is the subject, a less animate noun is the direct object, or the least animate noun is the indirect object. That is to say, that it's assumed that more animate nouns will act upon less animate ones and inflection is only used when necessary. Similarly, adjectives agree with the animacy of the noun they describe, unless there's only one noun in the sentence. A compound subject or object is denoted via inflection on the conjunction, which is placed before the noun phrase of the lower animacy noun. For example, if you were to say, flatulence and their language spreads among the humans, it'd be... Okay, let's talk about glossing for a second. Glosses for flatulent sentences can be confusing, so I've elected to use these colored boxes to help group related words into phrases. Let's start with these three red boxes denoting noun phrases. Here they are. 
flatulence, humans, marked as the object of a postposition, and their language, marked as the subject. Note that there is marked for a flatulent as a possessor and a concept as a possessee. The yellow there box is included within the red language box to show that the word there is describing language. Not too complicated so far. Next is the purple postpositional box, which includes the postposition and its object. It's hard to switch from thinking in prepositions to postpositions, but hopefully this helps. Next, we have the conjunction green box, which stretches over the words flatulence and their language, meaning that there was being conjoined as a compound subject. Finally, the verb stretches over its arguments, flatulence and their language, but I'll go into more detail about that later. Note that the blue box goes behind, not over, the postpositional phrase. This shows that the phrase, over humans, is not one of the arguments of the verb. So altogether, this sentence reads, flatulence and their language spread amongst the humans, although the postposition can be translated a few ways. With that out of the way, let's move on to verbs, because noun declensions on their own still leave ambiguity in sentences like, the flatulent the seed ate, since you know the seed is a noun less animate than a flatulent, but it's unclear whether that seed is from a plant or not. That's where the verb conjugations come in. Let's take an example. Imagine you're in a fancy flatulent restaurant, or and you want to give your compliments to the chef. So you say, Literally, the food tastes good. Except, oh no, you've conjugated the verb for a flatulent. You said, the cook tastes good. And now you're getting weird looks from the kitchen. I mean, maybe you do want to say that. You do you. Let's look at the verb conjugations. There's some sort of sense to it, but ultimately, you'll just have to memorize what prefix to start verbs with, depending on the animacy of the subject and the object. Importantly, it doesn't matter which is the subject and which is the object. You should like this video, it's conjugated the same as this video should like you. And it does. Why not return the favor? On top of the grammar, you also should really be careful not to say a sound for too long or not long enough or use the wrong tone. There are many common words in flatula that mean something completely different if you make an error like this. Examples include meaning kind, meaning stupid, meaning butt, meaning face, meaning greeting, meaning orgasm, meaning time, and meaning solitude. Such that, could you give me the time, becomes, could you leave me alone? Further adding to the complexity is, or, which is a type of reversing slang that the flatulent youth use often nowadays. They'll take a word like parent and reverse the letter to make which coincidentally means dirt. In fact, when a noun is reversed, it gets ordered in the sentence as if it has the animacy of the noun it resembles. But the verb still conjugates for the true animacy of the noun. For example, is this your parent would be this in standard flatula. But in this reversing slang, parent will get reversed to look like dirt and get placed later in the sentence, after the verb if you want to be extra rude, and the honorific will probably be dropped. <laughs> Failing to use in informal situations isn't impolite or anything, the kids will just know you're uncool. They'll probably start calling you... <coughs> this just means earthling, but it's more of a legal, scientific term, like what you'd find on documents or signage. In speech, people usually just call you... <coughs> meaning alien. If the kids you fail to impress start calling you... <coughs> it's because it's slang for... <coughs> meaning genital. 
and there are a plethora of words they'll start using because of their meaning in reverse slang in an attempt to further confuse you. And unlike normal reverse slang, the verb will change its conjugation in response to the reversing. So that sentence from before would become... <laughs> This sentence literally means, is this your dirt? And while the flatulent kids will know that dirt means parent, you won't. That is to say that if you're not on top of the reverse slang, you're gonna get flustered and confused more than you already are if you talk with any kids. Now, let's move on to the mandatory B-movie translation. <laughs> And that's all I have to show. Thanks for watching to the end. There were a bunch of little details that I chose to leave out for the sake of pacing and time, both your and mine. Like, there are some peculiarities with the noun declension system, and the reversing slang had a couple extra wrinkles. There are some irregular plurals based on certain plurals sounding like the singular form of rude words. Hell, I didn't give you a good look at the honorific chart at all. If this video piqued your interest and you want to dig in, there's a link to the Google Doc below for the grammar and the Google Sheets for the lexicon. And if you're still around, you're probably into linguistics. I'm working on making a set of lecture descripts that automatically derive modern Germanic words from their ancestors. I've tried looking for online resources on the phonological history of Germanic languages, and the best I can find are on Wikipedia and aren't detailed enough. Like, it doesn't explain why great, meat, and threat don't rhyme. If you can help a goat out, It'd be much appreciated. I'm Crusader, and I'll catch you later.